and welcome to my channel. My name is Queen C, the encourager, promoting an I can mentality with positive content. Today we're reading If You Think You Can, starting with chapter one. The greatness within you. Once upon a time, there were dreams. Dreams of greatness. A time when we wanted to be somebody. A time when we wanted to achieve something. Something great. Unfortunately, along the way, millions of us have forgotten that we are the masters of our own fate and creators of our own destiny, in a sense of speaking. As time passes, many of us give up on the idea that big dreams and goals are achievable. Far too many of us have lost sight of the greatness and potential we possess within. In 1957, members of a Thailand monastery were put in charge of moving a large clay statue of Buddha to a new location. As the crane lifted the statue, the weight was so great that the statue began to crack. Worse yet, it started to rain. In fear of seriously damaging the statue, they lowered it, placed a tarp over it, and decided to resume the work the following morning. That night, while one of the monks were inspecting the statue with the flashlight, he noticed a reflection shining from a crack that was forming in the clay. Out of curiosity, he retrieved a hammer and chiseled and started chipping away. Finally, after much of the clay had been removed, he realized that it was not a clay statue at all, but rather a large solid gold Buddha. Many historians believe that several hundred years earlier, Thai monks had covered the golden Buddha with clay in an effort to disguise it from the Burmese army. A battle ensued and consequently the Thai monks were destroyed. And it wasn't until 1957 that the true nature of the Buddha was discovered. Today, the Golden Buddha rests in a temple in Thailand on display for the public to see. Like that Buddha, we all have great potential and untold wealth within. Yet, due to the battles of life, we too find it difficult to see beyond our own layers of clay. Some years ago, Converse shoe company promoted this ad. Champions are born and then unmade. The ad implied that the innate greatness we possess, the moment we came out of the womb, would soon be replaced with limitations and defeat. We are born to win, then almost immediately conditioned to lose. Starting in childhood, conditioning is a gradual yet consistent and relentless progression. The average fourth grade child has heard the words, no, you can't do that over 70,000 times. Unfortunately, for many, this is just the beginning of the destructive conditioning that will be pounded into their heads for years to come. Buckminster Fuller put it this way, all children are born geniuses, 9,999 out of 10,000 are swiftly 
inadvertently disgenuized by grown-ups. Mm. Even as we grow, we get older, we make settlements, selling for less than our true potential as a result of what someone said or did. Maybe we had a goal and out of our excitement, we shared the goal with someone we admired only to hear them say, you are going to do what? You can't do that. You've never done something like that before. You don't have the education, the money, the talent, uh, uh, whatever. They question our abilities. And in that vulnerable moment, we believe them. In his book, Love and Awakening, John Wellwood uses the analogy of a castle to illustrate this conditioning process. Imagine owning a magnificent castle with thousands of rooms. Each room is eloquent, even perfect. You love each room for its uniqueness, its magnificence, its character. Then imagine someone coming into one of your rooms one day and boldly telling you that it's ugly, worthless, unacceptable. Consequently, out of your need to be loved and accepted, you might find yourself closing the room off from the rest of the world. Then imagine if most everyone else who entered your castle over a period of time also thought that many of your rooms were imperfect and needed to be changed one after another slowly but surely imagine each door being closed eventually you realize that by closing off these parts of you your castle or your dreams that it actually started making you feel safe soon you found yourself living in a castle with a thousand rooms but occupying only one or two. Many people are guided by the limiting belief that high achievers simply have superior talents and that enables their success. Well, research indicates that in most cases the opposite is true. After a five-year study of 120 of the top artists, athletes, and scholars, Dr. Benjamin Bloom has, and his research team, determined that success was more about drive and determination, not great natural talent. In fact, the belief that they were special surfaced long before any signs of greatness or talent were noticed. Dr. Bloom went on to say that even the mothers of those studied said it was their own child, brother or sister, who had the greater gift. As the saying goes, sometimes those who are given more end up with less and those who are given less end up with more. Maybe you have noticed at times that the more talent someone has, the lazier they are. I'm going to show you throughout this book, the author says, that regardless of whether or not you possess talent or any other special advantage, your dreams are possible. This was the case with Will Kellogg, who was reported to be a shy man of few friends, limited interests, and no apparent talents. Will was 46 before he decided to go into business for himself. At the time he was working for his older brother, Dr. Kellogg, never making more than $87 in a month. One day, while Will and Dr. Kellogg were experimenting to improve the food for his parents, they discovered flakes 
by accident. Will had left a pot of boiling wheat to stand a little too long, and when the wheat became temperate, it rolled into a flake. Will tried convincing his brother to mass market the discovery, but Dr. Kellogg refused. He doubted Will's idea. As a result, in 1906, Will decided to market the idea on his own and became one of the richest men in America. Because of fear, many attempted to set their dreams or goals aside before they make the slightest effort to achieve them. What do they fear? They fear the unknown, failure, what others would think. They even fear success. As a result, many find themselves living what Henry David Thoreau described as lives of quiet desperation. Others unconsciously allow past failures to determine their future successes. They unceasingly relive their past attempts and failures, assuming that because it didn't work out then, it probably won't work out now. It is easy to find reasons why things won't work. The world is full of rationales for why you can't be great. Achievers, however, find the reasons why they will work. For centuries, people commonly believed the earth was at the center of the universe and that the sun revolved around it. Although many great minds disputed this belief, Galileo the first to prove it false. To do so, he took the leaders of that time to the towers of San Marco. And with his newly perfected telescope, he showed them his discovery. They were threatened by his knowledge because it contradicted their strongly held beliefs. So they became angry and even tortured Galileo to get him to retract his position. Eventually, in February 1633, he did just that. Out of fear for his life, he retracts his belief. Wow. Guys, this is part one of chapter one. And we will pick it up right here next time. This is The Encourager, Queen C, No Longer Bound, and I am promoting an I Can mentality with positive content. Make sure you like, you share, and you subscribe, and we will see you right here next time.